Hey YouTube, welcome to the channel. My name is Everett Minchel. I'm a data scientist and machine learning engineer. And today I would like to go over some portfolio diversification using quantum algorithms. And we're gonna be using Qiskit. So this is based off the this tutorial here and I've linked it um, in, the, in the collab that I'll be sharing at the bottom of this video. And you can go and you can read through a lot more of the mathematical thinking behind this. I really like uh, Qiskit Finance and I've been trying to learn a lot more um, ways to incorporate quantum computing with finance. And so I thought we'd go through their portfolio here. I've tweaked it just a little bit so that it's less theoretical and explanatory and is more, uh, uh, we're gonna be basically using real stocks and prices um, to help us create a pairwise strategy here. But of course, if you want to read more about it, you can go to this link here. Um, I've already run through the code so that we don't have to wait while things get loaded. But you'll need Qiskit, Qiskit Air, Qiskit Algorithms, Qiskit Finance, Qiskit Optimization, and Cplex. Um, so Qiskit is IBM's Python package for quantum computing. Now, I won't actually be connecting to any quantum computers, and Qiskit Air um, uses certain quantum algorithms that simulate what it what a quantum computer would actually do. Um, it does cost some money, so if you want me to actually link up to a quantum computer and start running some stuff, uh, support the channel, and I'll make a video on it. Cool, so once all that is downloaded and installed, uh, we'll need to import some things. Math, datetime, matplotlib. We're gonna be using a lot of things from the different Qiskit packages that we've downloaded. Um, the algorithms that we'll be going through is the NumPy minimum eigensolver, QA, actually we won't be using the QA OA, but we will be using sampling VQE and the optimizers will help us um, optimize our computation of the quantum, I guess, algorithms here. From finance, we're going to be using Yahoo Downloader, and they already have uh, f uh, a portfolio diversification import that we can just grab to make life a little bit easier, and I'll, sh I'll show you how down below. The next thing that we need to do is actually get our data. So I tried to grab like three different stocks that were that were different. So I grabbed Microsoft, Disney, and United Healthcare, and downloaded them. And the problem here would be I've got a group of stocks, and I want to choose two of them that might act as good, um, either a pairwise strategy or just to help diversify the portfolio. The we're going to do one month of 2023, I think, is uh, is good enough here. And when we plot it, we can see the graph. Um, green is green is United Healthcare, orange is Disney, Microsoft is blue. Um, and they're trading at all different prices throughout that month. So you need to calculate the row and the, uh, we can do that simply by calling get similarity matrix and then we create the number of clusters that we want i ran into a lot of problems here if i did anything more than one as well as anything more than three tickers so that's why i chose those otherwise i'd when i initially tried to do this i had like 10 different tickers here and i was going to try to group them into three groups etc cetera, etc cetera. but um it just it's way too computationally expensive and i actually at one point was crashing my session on collab because i was using too much memory so the first thing that we do is create a classical solution to this problem and we'll be doing that using the classical optimizer this is the code here for that i, I don't want to jump too far into it because i don't want this video to be about in the blog post you can read about it here where you try to find the similarity between two stocks, right? So once it does that, we call the classical optimizer on our variables 
and it will calculate the number of feasible combinations as well as the total number of combinations. And then we'll start the quantum computing portion of, of the quantum algorithm as well. So basically this does the same thing um, that we did in our classical example, except we'll be using a quantum algorithm instead of the, uh, I think it's an eigensolver, or I guess we're using cplex in this example. And cplex is a solution that's also defined by IBM that you can connect to uh, using the cplex uh, package. But here we'll be using sampling VQE. Uh, we've also have QAOA as well in this. And then this helps decode the results from either of these two different uh, algorithms that we've that we run through the code. Um, the exact solution obtains the least eigenvalue of the Hamiltonian classically. What that means, I don't exactly know because a lot of the quantum algorithm and math is beyond whatever I learned in school. And so I, I'm trying to learn sort of by doing these videos. I chip away slowly like where are my areas of um, areas that I'm not familiar with. So forgive me if I can't give you an exact answer, but um, Basically, this whole portfolio is really just a way to show how you can do this quantumly, but by no means does it is it saying that you cannot do this classically. It's just showing you an alternative version to a classical solution. So just keep that in mind. And then it looks like um, you actually instantiate the quantum optimizer by calling it and passing passing through our our variables here. Remember, row we calculated above. Um, here, getting the similarity matrix, Q is one, and N is the number of stocks that we have. So we pass that piece of information through here, and that's how we instantiate the quantum optimizer, which is this guy here. Now, when we run the classical solution, uh, we use Cplex and it grabs the exact solution and it also we grab the classical solution as well now what we're printing here is the binary like uh, okay if i remember correctly like these are the different um so for instance, like classically, it's either a zero or a one, but in quantum, it can be either at the same time. So kind of what we're doing here is making sure that the difference between the classical error in the Hamiltonian uh, solution is less than 0 0.01, because it means that each um, set of the code is quantifying our problem at the same value um, or that or it's like the cost of we're, we're calling it the cost to our solution and right here you can see it's a little bit off like 005 versus 0035 is you know there's a little difference there but by it's less than 0 0.01 so uh, we're calling it a, an exact formula or we're calling it we're calling it the same basically cost um again you know maybe some of you might think i shouldn't be making videos without knowing all the answers but this is like my way of learning and sharing it with you in future videos i'll try to figure out what this means or explain it better at least so after that uh, we get the ground state and ground level and we pass through our classical cost and uh, we get this, and it says the icing Hamiltonian in Z basis is correct. So I don't really know much about icing Hamiltonian, but it's explained in the um, it's explained in the blog post. Uh, essentially, introduces a penalty coefficient for 
each equality constraint. Um, and we have to put it in a vector z. The Ising Hamiltonian elements can be written as follows, et cetera, et cetera. I am not familiar enough with math to know exactly what is going on here in a, on a quantum level. Um, but what this is doing is just running through this algorithm via our code here um, to make sure that um, the Z basis is correct. Um, and if you get something else, it means that the, your classical cost that you've calculated up here um, doesn't match. So the, the way I got the classical cost was by running through the, the CPLEX solution on our classical solutions and quantum solution cost. And that's what gives us these numbers here. And then we pass this cost, um, or the ground level minus the cost should be less than 0 0.01, essentially. Cool. So we kind of do the same thing, and we're using the sampling VQ solution. Um, and again, we're just making sure that the ground state minus the the minus the state from our quantum op optimizer using the VQE solution is less than 0 0.01, and we see that it is. And we also print out that the sampling VQE does not produce the same solution as the exact eigensolver, but that is to be expected. So, um, yeah, so it's to be expected because our eigensolver was just a little bit different. Where did I put it? Oh, is our exact solution. OK, the eigensolver is our exact solution, which is up here. Yeah. So it's a little bit different using our eigensolver, um, as you can see. But uh, like it says, that's to be expected because we're using a different kind of algorithm to produce the same sort of solution or to calculate the the probability solution of like the diff the similarity between two stocks. Cool. So then we create a utility function here to visualize the solution based on the y coordinates and x coordinates. And once we pat we get those coordinates by using Kiskit get coordinates on our data and we visualize that. So these are the selected stocks using the classical solution, um, which are over here. These are the ones that it would want us to choose, and less so this one. They're all connected, of course, because they're all in the same portfolio, but you get the idea. And if we use the sampling VQE, it chooses the 0 and the 1 um, instead of the 2. But it still addresses the coordinates on the same, sort of on the same lines here. Just kind of interesting. So um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I've been really enjoying going through Kiskit Finance ecosystem. I really wish I knew more math to help me understand um, some of the quantum algorithms going on here. Um, but like I said, this is getting into territory beyond my beyond anything I even approached in in college. So uh, I definitely have some studying here. I think the main thing is really just understanding the notation so I can have some idea of what I'm reading because um, I don't see something quite as advanced in, in other econometrics type blog posts or um, material that I've read in the past. But uh, I'm really interested in quantum computing, especially using Python as a quantum computational language. And I'd be interested to use some actual hardware. Um, and if you guys enjoy this, let me know. I might make other stuff doing deep dives on certain topics uh, if I have the time. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.